Welcome to Adobe Photoshop CS5, and let's start out by talking about the interface for Photoshop. Right now we're looking at the default interface workspace, which is Essentials, which is loaded up on default when you first open Photoshop. And let's talk about the different areas of the interface that allow you to do all your work and create all your magic. So at the top we have our menu bar, which our menu bar basically consists of all the functionality for Photoshop under a series of menus. Next would be the application bar. And the application bar contains your bridge, your mini bridge, your extras like your guides and grids, your zoom, arranging your documents, and your different screen modes like your full screen mode, full screen mode with menu bar. Then from there you have your workspaces and that's where you can load, unload, and create different workspaces. You have your options bar next which is basically a sort of a sidecar to all the tools that you select. So any tools that you select from the tools panel or the tools box is going to bring up different options in the option bar. Then on the right we have all our panels and all our functionality and tool panels. So your color, your swatches, your styles, adjustment layers, masks, layers, channels, and paths, so on and so forth. All of these can be accessed under the window. Last but not least, we have our image window. And our image window is where we do all our work and where we visualize everything. Okay, let's talk about workflow customization and workspaces inside Photoshop. So in CS5, on the top right, they give you some presets of workspaces that might be valuable to you. So if we drag this out, you can see that there's essentials, there's painting, design, photography, and so on. And each one of these workspaces um, sort of arranges the palettes in a way and the tools in a way that make it easier and more organized for you to work on whatever it is that you're working on. So the default is essentials, and so you can see this is the palette um, setup for the essentials. And moving on to painting, these are geared towards painting more, where it gives you swatches, you have your brush presets, your layers, and tool presets, and um, brush options. And design gives you some you know, typography stuff and your layers and swatches. But what we're going to do here is create our own for our own personal needs and for our own workflows and organization of tools. And um, let's start by just arranging some palettes that we know that we're going to use. And then we will save that out and we'll load that back in and we'll show you how to put it in this toolbar here and load, unload, and save out the different workspaces. On the right you have your workspace and you have your different palettes or panels that create up this workspace. So what we want to do is sort of arrange these palettes into a workspace that fits our needs, or at least my needs. Now over the years I've had these arranged in a certain way that um, I kind of expect every time I open up Photoshop. And right now the essentials is not that way. So what I'm going to do is arrange um, these palettes in that location. So layers I use quite a bit. So I like that to be pretty prominent in my visual plane while I'm working on stuff. I also use channels a lot, so I'm going to bring the channels and I'm going to dock that tab inside of the layers tab. So you can see that when it's about to get snapped into place, you'll see a blue border or a blue line and then the palette itself becomes semi-transparent. So now you can see that in this palette you have the layers and the channels tabs. Um, another one that I like to use is the masking. So I'm going to drag the mask out and do the exact same thing. You see the blue border and the semi-transparency, and bam, there you go. Layers, channels, and masks. So I leave that one by itself because I find that that's enough um, information for that one palette. So the other ones I like to use is color. There's a couple different ways that these snap together. You could snap it right underneath when you drag it out and it has the, the bar, so it'll snap underneath or you can make it part of a group. So if you drag it on top of this palette, you'll see that there's a blue line and there's your semi-transparency again. And so it becomes one group. And then another cool thing that's pretty cool is like if you double click these, you'll see that they expand. And then you have the arrows on the tab on the top bar, which collapse these and give you the minimized version. Um, 
adjustments I don't use too much um, not like this anyway but I still find this useful and I want to be able to use this in the future so I'm going to sort of side dock this so you could dock these even smaller into these little subcomponents and keep them on the side now my swatches very useful I'm going to bring that into my color tab and I'm going to bring make my swatches first and then my color actually I might actually keep my color outside but we'll start off here styles I don't use too much um, I use layer styles quite a bit but the you know, actual style presets um, I use when needed so I'm just gonna take that out for now and close it that's what this little dot does now it doesn't mean that it's gone forever every palette panel or window is under the windows palette here or the windows menu so you have your 3d actions everything is there so um, if it ever disappears on you you know where to get it now moving on I like the info so I'm gonna pull that one out and I'm going to dock this in the same group. And so we've got my layers, got my swatches, my color, and my info. Paths, I do use paths sometimes. Um, I'm just going to put this up in the top. But uh, it gets a little hard to read when there's too many in there, so I'm not a huge fan of that. But um, I'll just keep it there for now. Other things that I like to use that will help will be my tool presets, which I find that pretty valuable and here you go here's our tool presets um, 3d stuff I'm just going to close now actually I'm just gonna get rid of that and go from there so I'm gonna drag this guy inside of my group and put it in between so now once they're in the group you have on the bottom on the bottom right there's a little triangle that's kind of textured and you could sort of extend out um, how far you want these guys to go because what I'm going to do is snap this to the side here. So you drag your bar and you just move it over to the side and you'll see that it becomes semi-transparent again with the blue with the blue border and pop it over there. So and I like this to take up the full screen so I'm going to drag this guy down and so I've got like my nice organize, organized um, palette here. I got my layers, my channels, masks and paths. I'm going to actually sub uh, put this on the side here as a sub menu and drag this out a little bit. Actually didn't work. But so now I have it's nicely organized to what I like. So I'm going to save this workspace and I'm going to go to the arrows here and do new workspace. And I'm going to say I'm going to call this uh, Dave's um, general I guess and you can also put in keyboard shortcuts and menus that you shared or that you set up um, while you're doing this too so you could save that and you can see that right now Dave's general is being used and it's the setup that we just made and say if we don't like that or whatever we can always switch back to essentials and reload that so right clicking on these gives you some more options you could say reset or you can switch to the other ones so let's do reset and we're back to the essentials but I want to use mine so click on that and there you go let me show you a quick overview here of the palettes and the panels and how you can arrange them and dock them and uh, some of their functionality so if we bring out our adjustments you can see that um, dragging it by the top bar here it's a free form menu and you can drag it around and place it wherever you like double clicking it collapses it double clicking again expands it also on the top right there's these collapsed icons the little arrows does the exact same thing and the top left the little X that will close the menu so if we close that one really quick it's gone let's go get it again and it brings it back in the same place where it left off now um, with the other menus you could just go ahead and drag them into the palette um, if you want to sort of stow that away you can grab by the top bar and you can drag it under a smaller icon and so now it's just the icon view and you could expand that out or collapse it and you could do the same for your main section collapsed icons and you could grab these and pull them away too so again in Photoshop CS5 
um, they made it really handy and convenient for you to customize the menus, the palettes or the panels, whichever you'd like to call it, and uh, you could customize that. Um, so we're going to go back to my general that I just created and go from there.